Welcome to Murfreesboro Storyteller. We're pleased to have as our special guest for our program, Mike Bowen, who is the newly appointed Chief of Police for the City of Murfreesboro. Mike, welcome, Chief. And thank you for having me as a guest on your show. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. We're excited about things going on with the Murfreesboro Police Department, with the new building, with you into your first year as the Chief of Police. Yes, sir. How long have you been a member of the department? I will have my 30th year on June 20th of this year. All right, very so, good. So. You started out as a patrolman, I presume? I started in uh, 1988 as a patrol officer mm -hmm. and uh, pretty much spent the most, the biggest part of my career in the patrol division. I always uh, just like the uniform division uh, responsibilities and that aspect of the job. So I pretty much stayed there throughout my career. Sure. And recently then you moved on up in, in the leadership uh, roles of the department? Yes, sir. In uh, 2003, I was promoted captain and that kind of moved me from road type duties okay. more into administrative type duties. Right. And then from there I went to deputy chief in 2010 and then on to okay. police chief in last year. Mike, you're a native of Murfreesboro, correct? My family is from this area. Okay. My dad joined the military when he was young. Oh, I see. And, uh, Throughout his military career, he served 20 years in the Army, mm -hmm. and uh, throughout his career, of course, we traveled. Family moved about a bit. Moved about. Uh, we uh, were able to spend a lot of time in Oklahoma, and we went back and forth uh, to Germany as well. Okay. And then when he retired, he wanted to come back home. This is where he was born and raised, okay. and so we moved back to here. Uh, I have an uncle that uh, retired from the fire department, so I have a, a lot of family uh, that even extends back to what is now Canning County. I so, okay. going back generations. And you are a graduate of local schools? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I attended uh, Central Middle School, for okay. eighth grade. Then I went on to Riverdale, graduated from Riverdale High School, and uh, received my associate degree from Middle Tennessee State. And Chief was telling me about being a carrier for the Daily News Journal in years gone by. Yes, sir. Uh, my paper route, uh, the area we were talking about, extended back uh, through O'Brien Drive, okay. Mayfair, Aspen, Olympia, right. that neighborhood there. And I had that route for a couple of years. A uh, way to get some extra pocket money to, money to buy some uh, motorcycles, things of that nature. I understand. What led you to want to become a police officer? I think it was just an opportunity. Somebody said, hey, uh, we're taking applications. Oh, and okay. Yeah, it, it was something simple. I was uh, working at a motorcycle shop and I enjoyed what I was doing. Sure. And uh, one day somebody said, hey, uh, taking applications, you might want to give it a try. And uh, I did. You did? Well, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So you become a police officer and a, uh, as a native of this community and now risen to the uh, the role of chief and in your what, your first year of, of, of probation, I guess we'd call it? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Uh, first year, and it's, it's been a lot going on. A lot, it's, it's a lot of good stuff going on. Uh, we're getting, we are slowly moving into this uh, facility here, and uh, it's uh, something that's been long anticipated. Absolutely. And uh, it's definitely going to be a great place for our, our staff. It'll get us back under one roof again to where uh, right now we're spread out over uh, different properties. We actually have a rental property off Rutherford Boulevard where, where our CID staff okay. is now. That's where Bob Park Realty was at yes, one time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So hopefully uh, here in the near future we'll all be back under one roof again. And operationally that just uh, is, is big for us. So you had more than one location. I remember South Church Street was your main headquarters, I guess. Yes, sir. We have the main headquarters on South Church Street. And then as you go down the block, our record sections and our annex, our training division is actually on the corner there, okay. uh, uh, Broad and Church. So we're close together, but we're spread out in separate buildings. On Where that Courier block. Printing was at one time, and even before that, Young Lumber Company. I remember the Courier. I don't remember the Young. And I remember you telling me about Young yep. Lumber Company. Yep. So Right there at that location. Yes, sir. 320 South Church Street was our address. We're 302. And 3, that, 302 that, South Church. Thank you. Yes. We're 302 in the headquarters. Oh, so I'm so, me, so Young, that would was, probably be I think right. 320 was yeah. that location. Probably be right. Well, we're originating from the community room of the new headquarters facility here in Murfreesboro, North Highland. Yes, sir. What a magnificent building it's turned out to be, and I know you're so proud of it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When you look at projects of this nature, it's amazing the amount of time that you put into I'm them. Sure. Uh, I remember in 2010, the wasn't really real specific uh, plans or anything of that nature, but I can remember the thoughts, the concept. Mm -hmm. Hey, w one day we're going to have to be looking at a new headquarters building. Okay. Then in about 2012, I joined the conversation. And that's mm -hmm. when things became a little more serious, and we started uh, actually 
discussing locations, you know, what some of the thoughts would be. And then fortunately, this property, when uh, the medical center moved out, became available. And we were approached by city leadership and uh, asked if this would be a, a location, a suitable location for us. And, and we, were, we were on board with it. We yeah. thought it'd be a great place. Uh, as things were moving out, uh, it was a great opportunity to move into a, 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 mm -hmm. a, when everything's moving out, to move into an area and, and hopefully contribute to the, to the neighborhood. And you mentioned the former location of the Murfreesboro Medical Clinic, which yes, moved sir. away from here a few years ago, and the property became available and been, been converted into this yeah. modern, up-to-date police headquarters. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you look back, and uh, I think it was uh, Cliff Sharp uh, when we did the... Okay when we started construction here who had talked about the way that the building had served the community through through medical uh, services and uh, kind of reiterated that uh, you know through police services and by our, by our uh, presence here that uh, you know it's another way to, for this facility to serve the community so it's, it's a good correlation there. Physically here on Highland you have parking out front you also uh, have parking in the rear, I guess, for your your vehicles. Yes, sir. We have visitor parking out front, okay. as you can see out the windows here, and then out back we'll have our secured parking, and okay. that's where uh, the patrol cars and things like that we'll they'll there. they'll come in and out of there every day. I know you have a number of vehicles for the police department, some marked, some unmarked. Uh, you have any idea roughly uh, the amount of vehicles you have? I don't have an exact number, but uh, of course we do have a take home program. Yeah, I think. Uh, Statistics have shown that if you can put a vehicle with one person and let them drive that vehicle uh, continuously versus uh, pool cars, the, the pool car concepts, you get more uh, longevity out of vehicles. I can imagine. So we, we do have a take-home program, help us uh, with our responses as well. Uh, we, we have major incidents, Good Friday Tornado is a, a great example mm -hmm. that officers were able to deploy from their home to the scene. Uh, and there's a lot of these larger events where that where that uh, pays benefits. Uh, we do have that, and then we do still maintain a pool of vehicles, okay. a small number of vehicles that we use for people that maybe don't meet our requirements for take-home vehicles. Mm -hmm. Say they live out of the county, or or, or for some other reason don't qualify for a take-home vehicle. We do maintain a a fleet of vehicles as well. I noticed among the vehicles that your department and the sheriff's department and others utilize are SUVs as opposed to four-door sedans. Right, right. Uh, Ford did away with the Crown Victoria here uh, several years ago, okay. and they introduced two different models. They introduced a sedan and a SUV, and we uh, purchased initially purchased uh, both of them okay. and uh, kind of did a T&E on them and I found out that the SUVs were giving us pretty good service. They're easier for officers to get in and out okay. of, and plus they offer uh, a lot of storage area for, for the equipment that they mm -hmm. carry, and mm -hmm. they've really served us well. They have been a, a very good replacement for the Crown Victoria. A lot of, another one of the big benefits is they're all-wheel drive, and that okay. pays off tremendously in inclement weather, you know, uh, mm -hmm. driving in the rain, things of that nature. So they, they've been a good vehicle for us. Well, once you get moved in and relocated and everybody in position here at the new headquarters, what is your, your, your next challenge that you, you'll need to be working on? Oh, there's always uh, something going on as far as projects. Uh, let me ask you about the drug, the, 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 the drug problem, the opioid crisis we keep hearing so much about. Right, right, and, and that's important to bring up because despite everything that's going on as far as vehicles and new buildings and things like that, we are still focused on our, our primary mission, sure, and that is addressing uh, problems that we, that we have in neighborhoods, uh, whether it be drug problems or other type of crime problems. Those are always a priority, so first and foremost, uh, we, we want to deal with those. Dealing with the opioid crisis, it's, uh, it's one of those situations I think that legislators are really trying to work mm -hmm. hard on. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things that, especially with some of the just inherent dangers that officers face when they're dealing with those particular drugs, it's important that, uh, that we keep our officers trained and educated on, on the items they may be encountering in the streets. One of the things that you, know, you have to be concerned about is the number of overdoses that we're sure. encountering. Uh, the Murfreesboro Fire Rescue Department uh, currently carries Narcan, okay. and uh, fortunately they are able to respond uh, to most of the calls that we go to as well, and they're able to provide that service. I know in the near future that we will also start carrying Narcan, which is used to uh, uh, administer to persons who are, are suffering overdoses, and uh, that is something that uh, we are actually having staff training on. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully we'll have those in patrol vehicles here in the very near future as well. 
speaking of staff training in regard to that, that problem, I presume the members of the department are continually going through additional training to prepare them for various parts of law enforcement. Right, right. Uh, you'd be amazed at the number of hours we spend training. Uh, we try to sponsor a lot of training uh, by bringing in outside in, uh, vendors okay. to, to conduct training here. Mm -hmm. Our officers benefit from that training as well. You'll find that most weeks out of the year we are hosting some type of training event. Are you really? Okay. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's, it's something that we uh, we focus on a regular basis. One of the good things about this facility is uh, we've uh, definitely tried to allocate ample training sure. room. One of the things that we added to this particular facility was a training simulator okay. and basically it's a virtual training simulator which gives you a 320 de degree view and it presents scenarios to you. Officers are able to uh, work on their different levels of uh, force usage, whether it be verbal commands, OC spray, use of taser, use of firearms. We're able to train them on the very various aspects of use of force and it's uh, it's something where an instructor can find, provide feedback on their responses. Okay. It's something where they're, they can be evaluated and uh, the instructor also has the ability based on what the officer is doing to go in there and change the scenarios on them. So if they're giving good verbal commands or if uh, things are going well, they can make the outcome uh, one way or if things, mm -hmm. and, and you know, sometimes if the officer's doing everything right, they, they, the outcome might might change to sure. unfavorable. So it, it's something that we're, we have a lot of leeway in, in providing uh, much needed training. Have you had a simulator like that uh, available no, before? No, That's new. This is new to okay. us and it, uh, it's something that, uh, I know with our crisis in intervention team, uh, we were wanting to have a way to teach people on de-escalation tactics, and mm -hmm. that, that'll be one way that we'll be able to do that. Okay. What else do you have in the new building that you haven't had uh, access to in the old quarters of the department? Uh, a lot of things. Okay. Uh, uh, you have a tremendous uh, dispatch room, I understand. Yeah, dispatch, and uh, one, of the, one of the things that uh, our in detective division that mm -hmm. they'll have available to them is uh, the vehicle exam bay. They actually have a bay area now and they can bring in different size vehicles, okay. whether it be involved in a, uh, a fatal accident or some type of crime to where they need to preserve that evidence. They have a bay where they can bring it in. They can examine that vehicle. They can uh, lock that vehicle, isolate it for a uh, chain mm -hmm. of custody and it's something that will really help them do their job and be able to get that evidence, preserve it and collect it in, in, as soon as possible. Okay. There's also uh, several areas in the CID division that will allow better collection of evidence, okay. drying cabinets for uh, hmm. uh, evidence, clothing that may be contaminated by blood or other bodily fluids, it gives us the opportunity to dry it out okay. and be able to package it before we send it to the lab. It just lets us be able to work with it in a way to uh, prevent contamination. One of the unique uh, things that, uh, that we're able to do now, uh, currently law enforcement officers who are out on the street who mm -hmm. encounter evidence, right now they're still handwriting property receipts and turning oh things in oh that way. Uh, recently, we were able to upgrade to a uh, barcode system okay. to where all the evidence that we receive now, we can enter the information into the computer system, print a barcode, scan it in. The evidence clerk can then scan it in, uh, log it into the, to the property room, mm -hmm. and it just really streamlines our process, okay. and it really helps us maintain that chain of custody that mm -hmm. we need when we prosecute cases. You have a beautifully landscaped location here. Tell us how that came about. Uh, had a lot of input. Okay. Uh, the city staff, uh, urban environmental, mm -hmm. provided input. Uh, we wanted something that was maintainable, that had a, a good look to it. One of the things that we are able to do with this facility is uh, uh, our facilities manager will now manage this building, okay. uh, whereas before we we did a lot of things with inmate labor oh, and wow. and supplement staff, mm -hmm. uh, the facilities manager will now will, okay. will now supervise this building and, and the maintenance of it. Tell us about a young man coming out of school and he thinks he wants to get into law enforcement. What, what would you, how would you advise him? What would you suggest that he do? I would suggest that- Or young man or young lady, either one. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I would uh, find out where their interest is. Okay. 
if their heart's set on being in law enforcement, really look at the area of law enforcement where they may want to work, whether it be a local law enforcement, municipal type of okay. officer, state trooper, sheriff's department. Really research the different aspects of those jobs. Uh, look at uh, agencies you may be interested in. Okay. And you will find that there, most agencies are constantly hiring uh, law enforcement officers. Uh, ask about internship programs. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can enroll in an internship uh, program through your school, okay. try to do that. I know that we have interns. Oh, do you? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And, and we've hired several of them, so okay. it's been pretty successful for us. And uh, ask about uh, things like the Citizens Police Academy, the sh uh, different types of programs that those departments may have to where you can get in the doors and you can kind of see what the work is all about and see if it's something that you want to pursue. But uh, I would encourage, uh, if you're interested, to definitely look at, uh, like with the city here, uh, look at NeoGov, look for times when we're advertising and uh, take opportunities of those, uh, of those uh, job openings. Uh, we typically hire a couple times a year Okay. And it's uh, something that uh, really, if you're if you're interested in, I'd encourage you to at least get set up in that system to where you're notified of openings. Do you have much turnover? Turnover in, for law enforcement in general, nationally, has has been a topic of concern. Okay. Uh, I think it's just a, a lot of factors that that contribute to that. But that is something that, uh, in fact, ICP a couple of years ago, it was one of the top concerns for law enforcement agencies across the country. I can imagine. Yeah. And uh, I think the key to it is just look at uh, just looking at the workforce and seeing what types of things we need to do attract and retain employees. After you get into the building, get everybody relocated here on Highland Street. Uh, what what what's your next need? Major need for the department. I think that the, we are constantly trying to uh, improve the way we do business, so mm -hmm. I think that it's just a constant process where we're trying to implement programs. I know that we have a couple of programs that we really want to work on, and one of, that, one of those is our crisis intervention team. Uh, we want to try and get 100% of our staff members trained in mental health first aid, and then we want to get a large percentage of our certified officers trained in crisis intervention team and that is basically a 40-hour program mm -hmm. to where that they are trained to deal with a mental health crisis situation. Okay, mental health is, as opposed to everything else that you deal with. Right, 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 right. And uh, the model that we kind of follow is Memphis's model. They've okay. had a, they, they have a uh, very good program and it's one that we uh, researched. Uh, in fact, I took a trip to Memphis in 2010 and we were able to participate in their program mm -hmm. and it's one that we adopted. And you also see that the Rutherford County Sheriff's Department and other local okay. agencies participate in that program as well. Well, the new training facility uh, over on Bridge Avenue where the housing yes, sir. Uh, a project was, will that be utilized by the police as well as the fire? Yes, sir. That will be a joint facility. Okay. It'll be utilized by both, uh, both uh, agencies you'll see that a lot of the buildings were left standing. Sure. You'll see in the back. And you say and, will have been. Yeah, yeah, and we will be able to use those for uh, just different types of training. And of course, there'll be new additions. You, sure. you can see the fire tower that's been uh, recently built and you'll have a driving pad and some other things out there okay. to where we can conduct just uh, very strange activities. So you can simulate a lot of incidents, I guess, and, and, and address them there. Right, right. Uh, you'll see that like in the older buildings, uh, the, the ones that are left standing, mm -hmm. we are able to do SIMS training, uh, which is simulated training okay. to where we use basically small paint type cartridges for where we can do building, sure. clearing, things okay. of that nature, response, different types of response to calls, and use those type of uh, training tools. Mm -hmm. Your uh, line of authority, who, who do you report to as chief of the Murfreesboro Police Department? Currently, I report to the city manager. You report to the city manager. Yes. Okay, what? Not the mayor, but you, the city manager is the staff person you report to. Right, right. Okay. The way that the way the city's uh, set up is the uh, city manager is responsible for mm -hmm. all the department heads, okay. and of course, the uh, city manager reports to the mayor and council. And and who reports to you, Mike, as chief? Right now, there's currently a deputy chief that works directly under me, and that's uh, Eric Cook. Okay. And then below that, we have a uh, command staff that. Uh, that uh, report to him. So okay. it's, it's, right now it's currently broken down into majors, captains, and down on to okay. lieutenant sergeants. Okay. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty broad organizational structure. Mm -hmm. So, and you yourself came through the various levels of, of authority and and then became chief and head of the whole department. Yes, sir. Start off as a patrol officer, and that went to a patrol sergeant, patrol lieutenant, and then I went to a uniform division, the patrol services okay. uh, captain, All to right. deputy chief, to where I am now. 
Which officers wear uniforms and others that wear uh, plain clothes? You, your uniform division is about 100, uh, I'm just rounding off about 180 yeah. officers. Uh, they typically That's the majority, wear, right? They, yeah. they wear uniforms day to day, and then we have a smaller group, less than 50, that mm -hmm. are your CID officers, and mm -hmm. you'll see them wearing uh, plain clothes, okay. criminal okay. investigations division. Anything you think of we hadn't uh, mentioned about the new headquarters building and what's going on with with the department? Well, you, earlier you had pointed out the memorial, and yes. that was a. Uh, that was something that uh, for years we have been trying to think of a way to memorialize our fallen officers. Mm -hmm. And uh, l fortunately with this facility, we're able to es establish a, a memorial to remember them. It's tough because you realize a lot of these individuals are people that most of us, a lot of the current work staff, uh, workforce, people that they worked with. I'm sure. And uh, I'll have to say when I look back uh, to Herbert McClanahan, oh, yes. who was killed in 1946, right. I can say that when I walked through the doors, the officers made sure I knew who he was. And hopefully we'll be able to carry that on and remember yeah. all those that, that, that gave that sacrifice. Mike, one thing we haven't talked about very much is about your communications capability. Right, right. You'll see that our communication se uh, section has been uh, updated. It's going to be a modern uh, section of our facility. Uh, when we look at communications, one of the things we try to focus on with our communication staff and our, our certified officer staff is, is uh, employee wellness. So we try to incorporate uh, a lot of features into the building that will help them as far as physical fitness, yeah. uh, as far as giving them areas to where they can, uh, if, if they're coming off hot calls or if they need a place to just sit and take a few minutes uh, after uh, experiencing something okay. that I can. We, we try to incorporate those things in the building and uh, employee wellness overall is a priority for us and we, we, we hope that we have done things in this facility to help with that. Chief, we thank you for joining us. Chief Mike Bowen, Chief of the Murfreesboro Police Department and his, in his beautiful new headquarters building. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. On next month's episode of Murfreesboro Storytellers, we chat with Dr. Sam Ingram, former president of Middle Tennessee State University and Montlow State Community College.